When two-year-old Stephen Bradley was pulled from the family's backyard swimming pool, he was blue and not breathing. Using instructions given to the child's grandmother by a 911 dispatcher, his mother was performing rescue breathing. But her little boy still showed no signs of life. Okay, we're going to go into our compressions now. Yes. Okay. Yes. What I need you to do is place the heel of one hand in the... Place the heel of one hand? In the middle of the chest, between the, the nipples. The between the nipples. And push down with your hand. Push down with your hand. One to one and a half inches. Uh, just like you're pumping the child's chest. Okay, then one uh, breath of air. One then breath five of times. Keep five you. Times. Okay, and keep doing that repetition until keep help gets there. Repetition. I felt desperate. I felt scared. But more than anything, I was just thinking to myself, you can't fall apart. You just have to concentrate on what you're doing. Well, it is soon. They're on the way, okay? Where are you in the house? We're outside. Outside and back? Outside is the back, yes. Yeah. Ash crying so hard, no tears came out, but then Mommy said go outside and wait for the ambulance, so I did. I didn't know what was happening, because it was so scary. Arapahoe County Sheriff's Deputy Teresa Keenan got there within four minutes of the call. When I arrived at the house, I knew immediately that I was the first responder on the scene and I was going to have to perform whatever needed to be done. So I felt a heavy weight on my shoulders. Hey, they're here. They're pulling up? Yes. I'm going to let you go, ma'am. You did a fantastic job. You did everything you could, okay? Thank you. Oh, oh. Have you cleared his mouth? I began a resuscitation on him immediately. Okay. Then I felt for a pulse, no pulse. and I could feel no pulse on him. Come on, baby. I thought he can't be dead. He has to live. Okay, go. And I was feeling really guilty. You know, how could I let something like this happen? Within a few more minutes, advanced life support units arrived, led by paramedic Bob Smith. With the information we had, everybody pretty much was thinking the same thing. We're going to cut and run with this. We're ready to go outside, guys. Let's go. His heart was not working. He wasn't breathing on his own. So the quicker I could get in the ambulance and we can intubate him and start medications if we need it, then the quicker his heart's going to start again. Hey, we got a, we got a normal sinus right up pulse. Check for a pulse, will you? I got a pulse. You got a pulse? We knew because his heart rate came back that we were getting the oxygen into him that he needed. That's good. That's good. All I can do now is, is hope and pray for the best outcome. Stephen was admitted to Littleton Hospital, where he was examined by emergency physician John Riccio. Anytime we hear about a child coming in whose heart is stopped, we all initially have a, a very emotional moment where we kind of are a little bit scared and a little bit angry, and we all say to ourselves, how can this be happening? really bad on both sides. Let's go ahead and visualize his cord, please. When he got to us, he was not breathing on his own at all, and his lungs sounded horrible. He had been in the water for several minutes without oxygen, and he was just in serious condition at that point. He started to seize. If we were able to control those seizures. Directly following that, however, Stephen started to posture, which is even a worse sign of brain injury. And we were concerned that if he did survive, that he would have severe brain damage. Let's go ahead and just give him uh, repeated treatments. At that point, I thought, okay, he's alive. But then when I saw him in the emergency room, all hooked up to everything, it was more devastating than hopeful. Two-year-old Stephen was transported by Air Life helicopter to Porter Memorial Hospital in a coma. His mother and father stayed by his side for four days. I just held him in my arms and finally he woke up. His speech was very slurred and he was so weak that he couldn't even sit up on his own. Monday morning when the doctors came back in to see him, the kid was running down the hall. They said, this kid's a miracle. And he is. He certainly bounced back faster than anyone thought he would. But I don't think any of us were really surprised. 
because he's a very strong little boy. And we're very, very thankful for that. I think we were always pretty careful about watching our kids, but it's made me realize that all it takes is a minute to have an accident. If you're moving, it's a very disorienting time, and you got to be especially careful because your kids don't have a routine, and you don't know what kind of trouble that they can get into. We should have had a fence put in before we moved into the house, but we've got a big fence now and a padlock and another lock, <laughs> and I still worry. Okay, you. No, don't yell at them. Although two-year-old Stephen escaped without injury. His parents have been changed by the incident. You find yourself realizing how precious life is and how quickly that can be snatched away. They look pretty, don't they? So you do your best to appreciate everything that life has to give you. You might have little flaws, you know. It makes you realize that our kids are our priority in our life, and that we're very, very, very fortunate to have them. And it sort of made me more of a humble person, just being given a second chance and, and having Stephen back and having him back 100%. Oh, it's starting to wake up.